the show was at a dormitory lounge at Lane Hall at the University of Delaware. I had a friend that lived there, and we were talking one day, and he, he said, yeah, we, we, we have bands once a month. We, put, we have bands playing the lounge. I said, hey, I got a band. At that time, we weren't really a band. We just jammed a couple times, you know. He goes, well, hey, if you guys want to play, you can play the next one. It's December 1st, and, uh, you know, we pay you $150. I'm like, okay. <laughs> okay. I'd been up and down the East Coast performing as a soloist, uh, acoustic performer, and I was down in Florida trying to get a few shows, and I came back for around the Thanksgiving time. George had been in, down here in Florida somewhere, I don't know where, but he was down here playing, and uh, I hadn't talked to him, but didn't know how to get a hold of him, right? So it's like he gets home, calls me, he goes, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm back home. I said, oh, good, man, I'm really glad you're home, because we got a gig in like three days. We, we got a gig on Saturday night at the Lane Hall, and I thought he said the Union Hall. <laughs> you know, like Howling Wolf and all that. And I said, but I, I don't even have an electric guitar. He said, then get one. He's like, oh, man, I don't even have a, an electric guitar. And I said, well, you better get one. <laughs> so we had a rehearsal in uh, my parents' base, in my, where I was living with my parents. And then went did this, this gig, and we were in, we were, I was scared to death. We had one rehearsal or a jam, whatever you want to call it. And I didn't have an electric guitar. I borrowed his brother's electric guitar for this uh, rehearsal. And then we went over to Lane Hall, and uh, I went, and it, I think it was the night before, there was this guitar in a hawk shop, had been there for centuries. It was a, a Gibson 125 like this, um, but it was sunburst, and it had been there for years, and I, I had $200 to my name, and I bought it. And, and good thing I did, because I can't play any other guitar. You know, we're playing and playing, and, and people were, there's people there, they're just kind of like standing there watching you, you know, and we're not getting much of a reaction at all. And we're like, we're like, uh-oh, <laughs> what's going on here, you know? And then it was like somebody flipped the switch and just everybody just got out and started dancing. And we're like, oh, Okay, we're we're doing it good enough, you know. So we went in there, and uh, we know we know about three songs, and uh, I have to say we kicked butt all over the place. It was uh, a learning experience in that sense that that uh, you don't have the confidence, or I didn't have the confidence, to really know if we could pull it off, you know, and then we kind of felt like we could, you know, once people once we sort of get some kind of reaction out of somebody, you know. And the next day we talked and said, you know, I think we could make a go of this. Because I had been doing well playing in a coup. Well meaning I was well received. You know what I'm saying, fellas? Well received. And I just took what I did to an electric guitar with Jeff with the drums was even more well received. And there were people who weren't blues people. But they really responded to what we did. You know, we're like, hey, hey, maybe we could actually do this, you know? And maybe we could pull it off. But as a matter of time, we knew we would catch on. So we just kept plugging away. And, um, you know, it took a few years but with the right songs and got a record deal and all that. And, um, you know, we, we became successful. But he, he in the beginning, was, was the real driving force of it. Uh, encouraged me in a lot of ways. Uh, built my confidence up as a performer, uh, selecting the right songs. Uh, so I would have to say he was the, the real catalyst of the whole thing.